Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make my Celtic braided sweater. This is another versatile design. You can make this as a long sleeve sweater. I also have an option for you. You can make this as a summer top and just omit the sleeves and you can choose a more breathable natural fiber for this summer that I think you will really enjoy. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using hand dyed yarn from Nitty Gritty Fiber Arts. And I'll have information on this in the video description. Each of these hanks of yarn has 100 grams, 437 yards or 400 meters. And it is made up of 75% superwashed merino wool and 25% recycled nylon. The number of hanks that I will be using for the size large will be written just across the bottom of your screen. And I encourage you to check the written pattern, which will also be available. Check the video links below and you can find all the information you need as to the sizing specifics of the other various sizes. I'm also recommending that you have a size G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook and a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. To begin, for the large size, I'm going to start with a slip knot and I'm going to use a starting chain of 102 chains. After completing your starting chain of 102 chains, we want to join to the first chain and I want you to be very careful to be sure that we don't twist the chain before we join. So I'm going to be very careful here. Okay, so I'm going to join right there. There we go. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to that starting chain. After we do that, I'm going to chain two. And for the record, the chain two does not count as a stitch in the stitch count. And we're going to work a double crochet in each chain. I'm just working in the side of the chain because I am going to work on the remainder part of the chain when we do the finishing off later on. So you don't need to worry about working in the back bump unless that is your preference. So we're just going to work a double crochet in each chain all the way around and you should have a hundred and two double crochets once you finish this round. At the end of row one we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Go ahead, chain two. We're going to turn, and again, you should have 102 double crochets in that round. I've decided to switch to my black backdrop because I do believe that the contrast is better, not as harsh, and I think you'll be able to see the stitches better. And you get to see the beautiful quality of this yarn. All right, so now for round two, I've turned, I've chained two. This is where we begin the braided cable. I'm going to skip the next, the first two stitches. Again, just as a reminder, this chain two does not count as a stitch. After skipping those two stitches, we're going to work front post treble crochets in each of the next two stitches. working in front of these last two stitches we're going to front post treble in each of the two stitches that we just skipped starting with the first stitch that was skipped and then the next one that was right next to it okay after that we are going to front post treble in the very next two just keep in mind do not skip any stitches for the fourth and actually the fifth and sixth, the last two stitches of the six stitch motif. Okay, 
So now we're going to do something interesting. We're going to work in between the last stitch and the next stitch. And what we're going to do is we're going to work three double crochets. Okay, just like that. That's going to um, increase our stitch count by about 33%. All right, so now we're going to repeat that all the way around. Skip the next two stitches. Front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble crochet in the two stitches that we just skipped. And then we front post treble crochet in the next two available stitches. And after we do that, don't forget three double crochets worked in between the last stitch and the next stitch. This is not worked directly into a stitch. It's in between those two stitches. So we work three double crochets. So let's pause and take a look. And this is what you're going to work all the way around. After you've worked that last braid, we're going to work three double crochets in between that last stitch and the next stitch. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round. Go ahead and turn. And we are going to chain two to start round number three. In each of the double crochets, we're going to work two double crochets just worked right into the top loops. So those three double crochets, I'll go ahead and finish this here, those three double crochets become six double crochets in between the braided cables. After working those six double crochets, we're going to be working over the braided cable. And the first thing we're going to do is skip the first two stitches and we're going to work back post trebles over the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side, we're going to back post treble into this stitch and then into this stitch. So coming in from the back, there we go, and then it's going to cross on the front side, which is currently the back side. So again, we come in, this is from the back side, and we complete that back post treble. And then we work the next two stitches, which are right here, working back post treble crochets over these two stitches. So the braided cable is just a two row or round, in this case, repeat. We've done the first round, and then we just completed the second round as far as working the braided cable. I'll show this to you again. So now we come to the three double crochets. We're just going to, again, work two double crochets in each of these stitches. Just like that. So we make sure that we have six stitches. And then again, working over the braided cable. We're going to skip the first two stitches, back post trebles over the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side, we're going to go ahead and back post treble. In each of these I'm trying to flip it up so that you can see 
the front side so that you understand which stitch that we're actually picking up. And then the last two stitches, which are right here. And so after this round, your stitch count will actually double from 102 stitches to 204. So go ahead and work this all the way around. And again, the, the 102 was the round one. And then this is round three, which will double to 204 stitches. So go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of this round, we join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Just like that. Let's go ahead and turn. And this is what you should have after three rounds. Now for round number four, we are going to work a chain two. So after that chain two, we're going to be working the braided cable over each braided cable. And we're going to begin a new braided cable over these six stitches in between. I'll go ahead and do the first two for you. Skip the first two stitches. Front post treble over the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches. Front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And hopefully this will be easier to see how this is progressing. And then we do front post trebles over the two stitches right down here. Let's try that one again since it got away from me. All right, and then we're going to start a new braid over these six stitches. Skip two stitches, front post treble, and the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, front post treble, and the two stitches. Let me try that one again. There we go. And the two stitches that we just skipped. And then front post treble in the next two stitches. Just like that. So go ahead and work that all the way around. Again, working braid over these six stitches and then begin a new braid over the next six stitches. At the end of round four, we join with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round and make sure that you join it to that the top of that first front post treble and not the chain. Okay, so this is what we have after four rounds and you can see um, the braids begun. This will develop even more after the next round or two. So we're going to go ahead and turn. And to start round five, we're going to chain two and we're simply going to work the braided cable all the way around. So. We're going to skip two stitches, back post, treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side, we're going to back post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Assuming we can hang on to the loops, let's try that one again. And then in the next stitch as well. And then we back post treble into the next two stitches in there. Hiding here, so you need to make sure that you find these. And that's what we're going to do all the way around. And I'll go ahead and start on the next one. Again, skip two stitches. Back post treble in the next two stitches. And then working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side. You see the two stitches there we're going to work in. 
and the second one and then back post treble in the next two stitches and we're just going to work this all the way around you should have a total of 34 braids at this point let's go ahead and take a look at how this is developing so go ahead and work that all the way around at the end of row five join with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round let's go ahead and turn and see what we have so this is how your collar should be developing now for the next several rows you can go ahead and look across the bottom of the screen for how many rows we're going to repeat the last two rows or repeat rows four and five to um, establish the pattern stitch of the braided cable. So we're going to do this for the remainder of the yoke of the sweater. This is what you should have after completing 16 rows. Now for row 17, we are going to chain two and I'm going to turn. I'm going to have the back side facing us and we are going to work the row to discontinue the braided cable. And we do that simply by working back post double crochets in each stitch all the way around. We're not crossing back and forth like we've been doing. We're just going to work them straight across. Make sure that you work six back post double crochets over every braided cable. So I'm going to work six of these for you and just show you how this how this looks. Okay, so you're just, just going straight across with those back post double crochets. So go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first stitch of the round. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a little chain to hold this in place because now I have uh, an assignment for you to go ahead and get those four stitch markers. And let me show you what I have done. This again is for the large size. Now this is the, the join. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn. I'm going to turn this way because we are going to work with the front side facing this next round. Now we're looking at the back of the yoke. Well, let me go ahead and show you the front of the yoke. Okay, this is what we have, and I think this is going to be a lovely sweater. Um, I have added stitch markers, as you can see, and this is going to define where the front is. I've defined the front, and I'm going to be specific here. I've defined the back and also where the stitch markers are or where we're going to work chains under here that are going to eventually be the armholes that we'll be working around and around on for the sleeves. Okay, so let me show you with the front side facing and this is the seam which will be right down the middle of the back. And what I want you to do is counting these braided cables, count one, two, three, four braided cables, and place a stitch marker between the cables. Go to the other side and count one, two, three, four, five, and place another stitch marker. So technically the seam, which is barely, barely visible is not going to be directly in the center and the back. It's not something we want to feature in this design, but it'll be, it'll be just close to the back. Okay. So after you place those stitch markers again, from the center back, you have one, four cables over and the other is going to be five cables over. Just do that. And for the right sleeve for the right arm count one two three four five six seven sets of cables put another stitch marker again we're still looking at the back and we're going to do that on the other side from the other stitch marker count one two three four five six seven sets of cables and put another stitch marker 
in the front. And I've actually used a, another special little stitch marker just to remind me that this is the front, just in case. Uh, but you still have the, the seam in the back to remind you that that is the back. So let me just be real clear. In the front, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cables. Okay. So again, this is for the large size. If you want to look for the other sizes, please consult the written pattern for more detailed information. And I will have a diagram showing what to do here because this is probably the most important thing. Um, and once we work a couple of these rounds, I want you to be sure to have a shirt handy that fits you well so that you can compare the measurements from this to the shirt that fits you well, just so that you know that this is going to fit before you progress too much. Okay, so now we're ready to begin the bodice section. We're going to chain one and working in the very first double crochet, we're going to begin what we call the waddle stitch. We're going to work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet in that first stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to work again, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And again, skip one stitch only. In the next stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, which is the waddle stitch. So go ahead and work that. Now, again, I want to emphasize we're just skipping one stitch right now. Okay, oftentimes I will have you skip two stitches, but with this particular design, we're just going to skip one. So go ahead and work that until you get to your first stitch marker. After working those first 15 waddle stitches, you come to the first stitch marker that tells you that we're going to do something different. And again, this is where the armhole is going to be. So what we're going to do now is we're going to crochet a chain of 30 chains. After completing those 30 chains, we're going to skip the next seven cables to the next stitch marker, which is right here marking the beginning of the front side of the sweater. And we're going to rejoin in that first stitch of that first cable, which is on the other side of this stitch marker. And we're going to continue the waddle stitches, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, skip one stitch, and then work in that next stitch all the way across the front. I'll go ahead and give you a view so you should have the arm opening just like this on the sweater. After working those 33 waddle stitches across the front, you're going to have one stitch left, but we're not going to work in that stitch. Instead, we're going to go ahead and chain 30 again for the next armhole. After chaining 30 again, and again we're attached over here, we're going to skip the next seven braids and we're going to join to the other side of this stitch marker in the first stitch of the braid across the back. So we'll go ahead and join with the slip stitch, chain one, and a double crochet in that stitch and continue to skip one stitch and then work those waddle stitches until you get to the very first waddle stitch of the round. So having worked from that last stitch marker to the center, you should have only had to work 12 sets of waddle stitches. And so now we're going to join with a slip stitch to the chain one space right there and make that slip stitch. And then we're going to turn to have the back side um, facing us. Go ahead and chain two at the beginning of this round. And we're going to work only in the chain one space of each waddle stitch as we continue to work these waddle stitches and work them by working a single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then again to the next chain one space only. We do that again. 
So go ahead and work this, working it only in the chain one spaces. Work that until you get to the chain that will be part of the underarm. Now after working in those waddle stitches and when you get to the chains, we are going to do this a little bit differently than we did on the foundation round. Okay, we're going to work in that next chain. Okay, we're going to work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. We're going to skip the next two chains, one, two, and we're going to work in the next chain. So just be aware we are skipping two chains, not one, as you work across the underarm. This is that chain 30, and you should have about 10 waddle stitches worked along this, or actually exactly 10 if you're making a large size. So just go ahead and work them along that chain like that. So after working those stitches, we're going to skip the last two chains, and that brings us back to working in those chain one spaces of the waddle stitches. So go ahead and complete this round. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first, or actually to the chain two of that round. Let's go ahead and give it a chain two, and we're going to turn, and this would be actually a good time to pause and take a look at what we have so far. Okay, we can see the texture, how this is going to look against the braided cable. And I think it's a really nice complementary texture to this sweater. Now what I'm gonna really encourage you to do heavily is to compare the size of the sweater. I'm particularly concerned about the width of the sweater from armhole to armhole. And I really think you need to either try this top on, try the yoke on to make sure that this will fit you or compare it to a sweater or shirt that fits you very well so that you can gauge the sizing, okay? Because what we're gonna do from this point on is we're just gonna continue working the waddle stitch rounds just again and again and again. We're just gonna be working in waddle stitches from the third round onward. And I want you to do that until the top is as long as you want it to be minus one inch or so at the bottom where we're going to work some ribbing to finish this project off. Okay, so again, just continue working this in the round. Make sure that you turn at the end of each round. I'll tell you how many rounds I actually work for my size, but really what matters most is the length that you desire. That's more important than the actual number of rounds. So go ahead and continue that, and I'll show you what I have once I get to the length that I am shooting for. Okay, once I've determined that I have the length that I need, and I'll show that to you in just a second, I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to that first chain two of the round. I'm gonna go ahead and chain one just for a second because I'm gonna show you where I am. Again, this is the back side. And if I measure from the very starting chain all the way to the last round, all the way to this last round, I am measuring approximately 19 inches and that's going to be enough for what I need for the large size. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain again. So we're gonna chain two. I'm gonna turn, and this is the round where we work the ribbing. Now to set this up, we're going to work two double crochets in that chain one space, and then one in the single crochet. We're gonna work that all the way around two double crochets in the chain one space and then one in the single crochet. Notice we're not working in the double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way around. 
At the end of the round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch, just like that. You don't need to turn for the remaining four rounds, and they're all going to be worked the same way. Chain two, and as we work the ribbing, we're going to work a front post double crochet, followed by a back post double crochet. And we're going to work that all the way around, front post, and back post, and double crochet. At the end of each round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Remember now the chain does not count as a stitch. And then we'll just continue the front post, back post, all the way around. So for the next four rounds, so for the ending ribbing, this will be for rounds two through five. After the end of round five, you can just fasten off and hide the loose end. Now, if you wanted to just stop at a summer sweater, you are good to go at this point. I did not work any additional rounds on this. I, I don't really think it needs it. But now if you wanted to add the ribbing around the neck for the summer version, you can certainly do that. You're just going to need to forward towards the end of this video um, when I'm working on the sleeves, the long sleeves, and I have that towards the end. And I'll put a little time mark right there across the bottom so that you can forward to that section. But let's go ahead right now and talk about adding sleeves. This is going to be far easier than you think. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add our yarn. We're going to work a slip knot here. And I like to add these to the bottom or to the underarm section right here because there is going to be a slight seam which is not going to be bad at all, but I do like to have that rather hidden below. So it you know, just makes it less prominent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to join. Let me go ahead and do this again. All right, I'm gonna join. I'm gonna join right here. This is the section where we work the waddle stitch and then skip to um, et cetera many, many rounds ago. So I'm going to go ahead and join with the chain. I'm going to pull that down just a little bit and I'm going to work a waddle stitch in this stitch here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I'm going to add the stitches. Now it's not going to be exactly stitch by stitch. Okay, for this size, this is a large size, I'm going to be working 31 waddle stitches evenly around the entire opening and I'll go ahead and work that with you and show you how I'm going to do that. So the way I'm going to do this is I have as you can see, just work the first waddle stitch. I'm going to skip the chain two space, and then I'm going to work in the next space, which is where the other waddle stitch opposite of this was worked. This is when working the underarm. And so I'm going to do that in this section. Again, skip the chain two and working in the place opposite that waddle stitch. And I'm going to work it in this manner as I'm working on that foundation chain. I just have a few of these. I'll go ahead and work these and then I'll show you the transition. I'm also going to do one more thing just to keep things clear. I'm going to put a stitch marker, a removable stitch marker, in that very first waddle stitch of the round. Okay, now as we get to the braided cable section of the sleeve cap. In general, I am going to be skipping two stitches, working a waddle stitch and that next stitch, and then again skipping two stitches and working a waddle stitch. However, I'm still not going to get the number of stitches that I need. I'm going to be short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work these in as I go along. So and there are many different ways you can do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just skip one stitch 
occasionally so that I can work this in nice and evenly. So in other words, I just want you to work these in and around just as evenly as you can. Um, there's no right or wrong here as long as the stitches are looking even as you go around. Okay, so you may even want to spread out um, the waddle stitches where you only skip one stitch instead of skipping two. You know, spread that out evenly um, among or around the sleeve cap as you go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this round and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, I got 31 of these waddle stitches worked evenly around the armhole. Full disclosure, it did take me a few tries to get these evenly spaced around this section, but it is time that is worth your while. So go ahead and establish that count. Again, if you're making the large size, if you're making a different size, definitely check the pattern. Okay, so now we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round, just like this. The joinings going forward will be into the chain two sections. Okay, now we're going to chain two. We are going to turn. This is very important that you turn at the end of each of these waddle stitch rounds because it really looks so much better and the stitch is designed to be turned at the end of each round. It'll look really, really nice. Okay, so now for round number two, we're just going to be working in the chain one space created by the waddle stitches. And we're going to work the waddle stitch all the way around again, just working in that chain one space. So go ahead and work round two of the sleeve. At the end of round two of the sleeve, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that chain two, and then we will turn and we are going to do additional rounds. Now I'm not going to give you a number for how many rounds to do next because it's going to be based more on measuring with your measuring tape. So what I'm going to have you do is repeat round two until the sleeve is approximately six inches long. Um, this again is for the large. If you want the sleeve to be longer or shorter at this point, you can go further. But after six inches, we're going to begin decreased, decreased rounds and that will make the sleeve narrower as we go. So go ahead and work this, working over the same number of waddle stitches until this piece measures approximately six inches long. And I'd, I'd go ahead and encourage you to go ahead and put a stitch marker or something at the beginning of that first waddle stitch of each round, just so that you don't get lost in all of these stitches. So go ahead and work those six inches and then I'll show you what to do next. This is how your sleeve should look after completing approximately six inches. For the record, I worked 22 rounds but it's okay if the number of rounds that you worked is more or fewer. Again, what's the most important is the distance measured. Okay, so now for the next round, this is going to be a decreased round. We're going to chain two and we're going to only single crochet in the first waddle stitch. And that produces the first decrease. So once you've worked that single crochet as your decrease, then we are just going to work waddle stitches and the remainder of those chain one spaces all the way around. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the chain two space, just like we've been doing. And then the four rounds following this are just going to be normal rounds. We are not going to be working in the single crochet, but only in the waddle stitches. So again, this is a decreased round. We will work this and then followed by four rounds of regular, uh, just continuing the same count without decreases. After we do that, we are going to repeat the decrease round and the four regular rounds after that 
an additional seven times. And so for every five rounds, you're going to be decreasing the stitch count, the waddle stitch count, by one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work this, and then I'll show you what I have. One recommendation I will make is to mark each decrease with a stitch marker or a piece of contrasting yarn of some sort just to help you keep track of how many decreases plus the additional four rounds that you have completed. It just makes it a lot easier if you mark each of those decreases. That is just mark, uh, for example, the single crochet, which is right here at the beginning of this round. You can just mark that with a stitch marker and just leave those in so that you don't have to go back and try to recount everything. This is what you should have after completing those repeat rounds with the decreases and I'll show you what I've done. I have stitch markers for every time I decreased and I put a stitch marker in that single crochet where I crocheted a single crochet instead of a waddle stitch and then additional four rounds after that and so I did that the first time and then repeated it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Again, followed by the four rounds. Now what I'm going to do is the next 10 rounds, I'm going to work just maintaining the stitch count. So what I'm going to do is just Continue working in pattern stitch with the waddle stitch in those 24 uh, waddle stitches per round. I'm going to do that for a total of 10 additional rounds. Now, at this point, if you want your sleeve to be shorter or longer, you can adjust that number easily just by working additional or fewer rounds. Keep in mind that we are going to work the last inch or so using the ribbing stitch just like we did at the bottom of the sweater. Okay, so definitely leave this amount to be worked on the sleeve when we finish. After completing those additional 10 rounds, we're ready for the ribbing. So let's go ahead and chain two, one, two, and we are going to skip the double crochet and we're gonna work a double crochet in the chain one space and a double crochet in the single crochet and we're going to do that all the way around so we're going to only end up with two double crochets per waddle stitch so that would make a total of 48 double crochets now after we do a round or two of this and if you decide that you want the ribbing to be slightly tighter all you need to do is change down one hook size. I'm using a size G. You can just go down to a size F or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and that will tighten it up just a bit. So go ahead and continue working the double crochets around. After working these all the way around, go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And for the record, the chain two does not count as a stitch. So now we're going to chain two, and this is the way you are going to work the next four rounds, which would be rounds two through five. We're gonna work a front post double crochet, followed by a back post double crochet. And just work that all the way around, front post, and then back post. So go ahead and work that all the way around and join just like we did at the top of that first double crochet. And at the end of row, I'm sorry, round number five, go ahead and fasten off and hide the loose strands. Now I've completed my sweater with the arms and everything. I'll put a better picture of this in for you right here. And I have one more thing I'm opting to do. You can also create or crochet an optional ribbed collar around the top. 
I honestly believe this sweater stands alone fine without doing this, but I think it could also add some continuity by adding a ribbed um, edging that is going to match the bottom of the sweater and the arms. Again, this is optional, and if you wanted to add this to the summer version of the sweater, that would be the sweater without the long sleeves, you can certainly do that. And also concerning that, feel free to experiment with other um, you know, more summer friendly uh, fibers if you opt for the summer version. Well, let's go ahead. I'm going to turn this to the back. Now we're going to start the ribbed collar trim and I'm simply going to do this by joining in the back of the collar. Make sure you do that. And I'm going to join the original starting chain just like this. I'm going to work my my little slip knot and join with that chain too. And we're going to do this um, by beginning by working front and back post stitches around the foundational row of double crochet. So we're going to start with a front post double crochet and then a back post so we can begin the ribbing right off front post and then back post and we're just simply going to work this all the way around the collar front post and back post just like so and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round right here and then we're going to chain two without turning and we're just going to again work round two through five with working front post double crochets, back post double crochet, front post, back post, just the way we did for the ribbing along the um, the end of the sleeves and at the bottom of the sweater. So go ahead and complete those five rounds and then fasten off and at the end of that go ahead and hide all of your loose ends using the yarn needle, making sure that you clip those ends close once you've hidden them very carefully into your work. Well, I hope you enjoyed making my Celtic braided sweater today. If you did, I, as always, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.